Hallelujah. Without your help, my Lord, without your help, my Father, this journey I would have already fainted. But Lord, as we advance on this new year, this new month that you have given unto us, we glorify your name and honor you, for you alone are worthy of all our praise. Father, I pray as we begin this broadcast, that your hand is going to be upon us, O oh God. And Lord, you're going to help us by your grace. Lord, to pray. Lord, to seek your face. Lord, to call on your name. For you are worthy of all our praise, our God. Without your help, O oh God, we would not be able to do this journey. But Lord, we continue to go. We continue to move. Welcome, welcome precious Lord, welcome Holy Spirit, I welcome you my Lord, help me, help us. It's a season of fruitfulness by the grace of God. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 says, I received from the Lord what I also gave unto you. The night the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this every time you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray for the bread and for the cup. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this cup. I thank you for this bread. I pray, Lord, even as I commence this uh, wonderful broadcast, the Lord will give me your grace. The Lord will give me your capacity. You will help me. And also help my dear viewer who is watching from wherever time zone they are. That Lord together will be able to ascend this mountain. And that Lord will be able to glorify you. Even as we are proclaiming a season of fruitfulness. We thank you Lord that every other thing that has not enabled us to walk in fruitfulness. Will be uprooted from us. So Lord, we pray as we commence this time, committing the bread, committing the, the wine into your hands. Father, praying that the blood of Jesus, Damuya Yesu, the blood of Jesus, that speaks better things than the blood of righteous Abel, will indeed arise upon our lives as we proclaim your death. Lord, if by any way, I may have walked contrary to your ways. Lord, I return back to you. As the word of the Lord says in 1 John 1 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will cleanse us from all manner of unrighteousness. Lord, be there any manner of speech that I have spoken, be any matter of thought I have thought, be it any manner of history that could be there, Lord, that the enemy is basing their attacks on. We delete that history. We delete that sign. We delete that every challenge that the enemy is releasing. We empty ourselves of ourselves. And I pray that, Lord, not for popularity, but for your name to be glorified. Not for any other thing, but, Lord, I show up again on this altar that you may continue to shape us together with my friends as we walk along on this journey of 150 days of Psalms. So we thank you. Because God, we have arrived today, 93, by your grace. So we commit this time into your hands, in Jesus' name, as we pray with thanksgiving. 
Amen. Let's partake of the bread together. Take the cup together. commence and tell the Lord every power that has made my life to look like a fig tree die in the name of Jesus the book of Mark chapter 11 verse 20 the word of the Lord tells us there that the Lord Jesus was walking one day and he was hungry and he looked upon a tree and he was looking for figs so that he may eat and you know just quell his uh, his hunger but what happened is that he looked at the tree and the tree had no fruit on it. Hallelujah. This is in Mark 11, 20. It says, In the morning as they went along, they saw a fig tree withered from the... Uh -uh. That is where it had happened. Verse 12 is where it starts. Mark 11, 20 to 11, 12. It says, The next day they were leaving Bethany. Jesus was hungry. Seeing in a distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say, Verse 20 says, In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you have cast has withered. Verse 22, have faith in God. Jesus answered, tell, truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, 
but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Verse 24, Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. That is the secret of fruitfulness. We announce a new season of fruitfulness. The Lord allowed us into a month of harvest. We saw the Lord move in a supernatural way. Souls, souls, souls. Everywhere that we come into contact with a human being that does not know Jesus and share the gospel, they end up putting their life to Christ. This is the joy that we have as the saints of the Lord, as we call on the name of the Lord, as we seek the face of the Lord. We bless the Lord. Psalm 93, Psalm 93. The Lord reigns. Hey, Veka Arata, Veka Arata. See the brothers. Hallelujah. Jesus, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Hey, so I'm more than two months. Let's sing it out. Let's say, Arunai ma asenu. I cannot hear you. Yes, you are missing. Kenu, be true. Arunai ma asenu. Ugo ale. Yes, you are missing. Kenu, be true. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. There is none like you. Father, you have taken us again back to the word again and 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 again welcome holy spirit welcome spirit of god guide us lead us we greet you precious lord we say it's us again in the need of prayer Lord, we call you. We say, here we are, knocking at the door, seeking your face. Ugo alen, Yesu amisikenu, bikubo. Adonai mahasenu, Ugo alen, Yesu amisikenu, bikubo. Adonai mahasenu, Ugo alen, Yesu amisikenu, bikubo. This one we are saying, the Lord is our refuge. The Lord is our Messiah. It is He who will save us. Say to Lord. Hallelujah, precious people. I greet you in the most excellent name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I celebrate you on the first day of November that the Lord has allowed us to come and to gather in His name on the 93rd Psalm as the Lord enables us into book 4 and to be able to read out as we go through this wonderful journey. Today also, the Lord has added unto us the book of Ephesians, that as we study, read, pray, meditate upon, and hide the word of God in us, we can say with the psalmist in Psalm 92, 4, For you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy of what your hands have done. Now this alone is something that we can tell the Lord constantly. That God, you have made me glad. For you have enabled me to sing for joy for the things that your hands have done. Psalm 92 verse 4. We thank God as we begin to reach out this very short psalm. It's only five verses. That the Lord will help us even with the rest of the scriptures as we declare a season of fruitfulness. A season of fruitfulness. Probably you have been there. The whole time in this journey, you have not even managed to lead one soul to the Lord. Even one soul. Maybe you are telling yourself, probably they will get to know Jesus. Probably they will get to know Him. 
the dynamics of God, the power of God is upon you so that you can begin to be a powerful Christian. Not just an ordinary believer that is going to heaven, that pays their tithe, that is faithful, that goes to church on Sunday, that opens every link that their church sends, but does not practice on their own what God allows us to practice. It is a beautiful thing to be able to arise in the presence of God and to wait on Him and to allow the word to flow in your life. Majority of the time we want to just hear about the blessings and the blessings and the blessings. Huh? But we do not want to partake of the agenda of God in our generation. It is time for fruit as a believer. It is time for you to make a difference in your location. It is time for you to make a difference in your area. Whatever area you are in, that you can begin to bring out the fruit of the Spirit. That is a season of fruitfulness. Uh, it's a season of fruitfulness. It's a season of fruitfulness. I decree it again. It's a season of fruitfulness. Whatever has not been bearing fruit in your life, the Holy Spirit is removing it out of your life. Hey, 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 dry up from your roots to the top of your leaves in the name of Jesus. Whatever that does not bear fruit in my life, cut it out, my father. Cut it out, my lord. Cut it out, cut it out. Sing it. Arunai Mahasenu. Welcome, brothers. It's been a minute. 
is a season of fruitfulness. Season of fruitfulness. Hallelujah! Come on, clap your hands and dance for the Lord. Come on, clap those hands. Clap those hands. Clap those hands. Clap those hands. Hallelujah! Come on, clap your hands. 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 Hey! Hallelujah! Oh me! for we are having a wonderful time a season of fruitfulness hallelujah let's clap our hands for the lord hallelujah we give glory we give honor we give adoration we give thanks to our god psalm 93 the lord reigns he is robed in majesty the lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength indeed the world is established, firm, firm and secure. Your throne was established long ago. You are from eternity, from all eternity. The seas have lifted up, Lord. The seas have lifted up their voice. Verse number three. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves, mightier than the thunder of the great waters, Mightier than the breakers of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. Your statutes, Lord, stand firm. Holiness adorns your house for endless days. The ministry of prayer is not something that we can say is easy to do. But the Holy Spirit, our helper and our guide, makes it easier and smooth. It's like when 
the house has been done wiring. All it needs and requires is a switch to put on the light. The electricity has already been connected. Even if it's to your garden lights, even if it's to your jacuzzi, even if it's to your swimming pool pump, even if it is to your, you know, uh, to your to your windmill, even if it is to your all the areas your power needs. The power, electricity, the light, it requires to have a wiring. Eh? Wiring. For the power to flow, it requires wiring. It requires power. It requires that even your mobile telephone. They will tell you this one has wireless charging. But in the wireless charging, there is a point of contact for the electricity to begin to flow. The powers of darkness will need a place of contact for them to begin to transmit their negative power into your life. You need to know that you need to cut off the power supply from the main transformer. If at all you cut it off from that switch, there is still power flowing into your house. Even if you cut it, if you remove a bulb, it will be dark, but the power will still be there. If you try to remove the power from by just not adding more tokens into your power line, it's going to be, or by not paying your electricity bill, that does not stop power from flowing into your house. We need to know something, beloved. As we are gathered here, we need the dunamis of God. The Greek word for power is dunamis. We need the dunamis power of God that we can begin to see a manifestation of what the word of God says concerning us today in our generation. There where you are, my sister Charity, there are some things that the enemy has been sending your direction, causing them to be a limitation for you. We understand that men and women at times enter into covenants that limit them, that even you don't understand what is happening. All of a sudden, two people that were living together harmoniously, they have to separate. And then all of a sudden, as they separate, that's when the blessing now starts coming to one of them. Who has entered into covenant? And the covenant he has entered to is into powers of darkness, which does not permit him or her to have a husband or a wife. So whether you struggle, even if you go to which prayer mountain, nothing will happen. So you need to start by taking the power off that transformer. Destroy that altar. Totally demolish it. That that wicked power will stop transmitting into your family. There are some family members that have covenanted themselves into powers of darkness that they have chosen that no Christian will have power in their family. So if you are the believer in your family, you are the poorest. You are the one without even a car. You are the one without what? And you are praying every week. You are there on the mountain praying. And you don't understand why. Everybody else is blessed in your family apart from you who is a born again believer. So you think that the reason why you do not get the blessing is simply because God wants you to go through lack and poverty. But that is not the purpose of God in your life. The purpose of God is that you may operate in fruitfulness. That there will be fruit out of you. That even though it's not the season for figs, as long as your leaves are looking green, the Lord does not expect to pass by you and find you without fruit. If he finds you without fruit, then he takes you to Matthew chapter 3. Hallelujah. And this is where John the Baptist mentions. And he says the axe is now at the foot of the tree. The one that does not bear fruit, it will be cut off and thrown into the fire. You cannot just be a Sunday Christian. You cannot just be a daily Christian when you are telling the Lord now that is the time for me to come to the Lord. Hmm. John chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3, verse 10. He says, the axe is already at the root of the trees and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. My beloved, 
It is something for us to know that God says there's fruit of there is a season of fruitfulness. What the picture that comes into your mind is that it's a good time, guy, good tiding, good blessings, and all this. Also, I want you to know that God expects you to provide fruit. That your life to be fruitful, you must come to the place of understanding his power. I want you to see in Psalm 93 verse 1. The Lord reigns. There is no contention. The Lord reigns. The Lord does what? The Lord reigns. What does the Lord do, Silla brothers? The Lord reigns. That's right. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The robe that the Lord is doing is where he wears the robe is majesty so if at all the holy spirit will allow us to see in the realm of the spirit and to show us the lord to see him we will see him reigning and he's robed in majesty i don't know how majesty looks like lord i want you to show me majesty teach me majesty man cannot show us majesty Lord, man cannot teach us what majesty is because you are robed in majesty. That's one of the robes. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. Armed with strength. The book of Isaiah 28 verse 6, the word of the Lord says that the Lord arms, the Lord arms, those that turn battle at the gates with strength. He arms those that turn the battle at the gates with strength. So as we arise, this far you have come, 93 days, every single day, praying through the Psalms, talking to God without... Hey, you cannot remain the same. You cannot remain the same. I cannot be the same. No. This is the second time the Lord is taking us through. It's season two. The Lord has said three seasons. Hey, my father, you provide grace and you give strength to the weak. Even, Lord, as your word declares, so shall it be. That even those that are weak, you provide strength. Father God, your word says that you provide strength to the weak and the weary. That those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not fade. I want you to lift up your right hand before the Lord and say, I shall run and not be weary. I shall run I shall walk and not faint. I shall walk and not faint. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That is Isaiah 40 verse 31. That the Lord will cause you to raise up. That God will give you strength. It's a season of fruitfulness. In Jesus' mighty name. The Lord is robed, in, is, is robed with, in majesty and armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established firm and secure. Nothing can ever move the world. The world is established. God knows that he has established it in the orbits. He has put it there that it should always go around the axis and go around the sun every single day. The daylight saving time has already been released over certain areas in the Northern America and so on. Their time now has moved back, minus one hour. There are also places where it has gone plus one hour. This time change and difference gives one area 25 hours and the other area 23 hours. This is just basic mankind uh, stuff, it's not, uh, but has also a very spiritual meaning. DST is what we call the daylight saving time. And this one is the one that actually talks about when a season changes, that especially in the United States and Canada, that uh, the summertime and also, you know, these other areas, they advance their clocks during warmer months so that darkness falls later each day, according to the clock. Then the typical implementation of DST is to set clocks forward by one hour in the spring and to set clocks 
back by one hour in autumn, that is in fall. As a result, there is a 123 hour day in a late winter or early spring 25 hour day in the autumn. So, you know, this thing was made by the early, early fathers. Judge George Hudson he proposed the idea and, uh, of daylight saving in 1895. So, this is just information I'm giving you. And I want to tell you how it is relevant to you and how you must pray. Many countries use it in various times since, particularly since the 1970s, energy crisis. DST, DST is generally not observed during near the equator. So guys like Kenya, we don't have it. When sunrise and sunset do not vary enough to justify it. Some countries observe it only in regions, e.g. some parts of Australia observe it while others don't. One minority of the world's population uses DST. Afri Asia and Africa don't observe it. So the DST clock shifts sometimes complicate timekeeping and can disrupt travel, billing, record keeping, medical devices, heavy equipment, sleep patterns, computer software often adjust clocks automatically. But policy changes by various jurisdictions of DST and timings may be confusing. I want us to pray. This one, I want you to have understanding what I'm talking about. DST causes confusion. One, they are given 23 hour. Another one, 25 hour. We need to pray against the spirit of confusion. That anything that the enemy may want to set confusion upon to complicate timekeeping, there are some things that must be kept using time. Medication needs time. Aviation needs time. Marine in the, in the, in the, in the sea needs time. Warfare needs time. Because a missile has been tuned to fly in a particular distance, in a particular time. So when a missile is fired, psh, it's supposed to go in one hour. If at all, that one hour is not one hour, the missile will detonate in the wrong place. So the time is very, very key for us to understand that even sleep patterns are affected. There are people who, when they travel, when they go to a particular location, their sleep pattern cannot become ordinary. The time people are awake is the time they are sleeping. The time that they are awake is the time that people are sleeping. So you find that these patterns, they need to be realigned. If you are a traveler, I want you to pray for yourself. You put your hand on your belly and you command it, Lord, you give sleep to those you love. Because if you do not pray for yourself, you will be troubled and be put in the same category with the wicked. Where the wicked are given no rest. You don't want to be in the category of the wicked because of lack of understanding. It's important for you to have understanding. It's important for you to know the times and the seasons. It's important for you to know the times and the seasons. It's important for you to know the times and the seasons. So the time that we are in today, what the Lord is saying to us is that it's a time, it's a season of fruitfulness. With this means that if at all you have not been leading souls to the Lord, if at all you have not been praying, if at all you have not been reading the word, if at all you have not been able to do that which God wants you to do, now is a time for fruitfulness. Now is the time for you to lay hands on that sick person, let them get well. Now is the time for you to boldly proclaim in your congregation. You tell them this is not of the Lord, but in as it says in Ecclesiastes, that a wise heart will know the right time and procedure. So you will not just go and rise up when the church is on go ongoing and rise up and say, you guys have not been worshipping God in the right way. If you do it like that, yes, you'll pass your message, but you will not have used the right way and procedure. God will give you capacity to be able to do it. I bless the Lord also for, you know, the souls that the Lord is able to uh, bring to his kingdom and to sustain. It is not our job. So far, because if, as this journey began up to now, I think approximately over 400 souls have made a decision to know the Lord. That is on a person-to-person -person 
basis. The people that I meet, I don't know what, who may, who others they lead to Christ, but you can imagine the great chain of salvation that people are able to bring to the Lord once one soul comes to the Lord. We glorify the Lord. We give glory to God. We give glory to God. He's a mighty God. He's a worthy God. We celebrate the wonderful, 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 wonderful word of God. For he is a good God. He's a mighty God. He is a God of victory. He's clothed in strength. Psalm 93. Your throne was established long ago. The seas have lifted up, Lord. The seas have lifted up their heads. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the thunder of the great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea. The Lord on high is mighty. Your statutes, Lord, stand firm. Holiness adorns your house for endless days. We give you glory, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. <laughs> Proverbs 1. Silly. And then the Kerembe. A Kerembe is Psalms in the Maasai language. Says, I have a metal worker who is working me. I have a rock. Simple like, hey, he's my shield. There are no thorns to hinder me. See, do like my brethren. Time came when Elijah. I can't wait to go to Magadi very soon and meet. Brother Tichikas and his wife, I know the Lord will let, will allow my feet to go to Magadi soon and I will glorify the Lord. Proverbs chapter 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning. Let the discerning get guidance for understanding proverbs and, and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Then if you want to become an engineer, a great one, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That fools despise wisdom and instruction. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. My son, if sinful men entice you and do not give in to them, if they say, come along with us, let us lie in wait for innocent blood, let us ambush some harmless soul, let us swallow them alive like the grave, and the whole and whole like those who go down to the pit. We will get all sorts of valuable things and fill our houses with plunder. Cast lots with us and we will all share the loot. My son, don't go along with them. Do not set your their, do not set on their paths, for their feet rush into evil, they are swift to shed blood. How useless to spread a net where every bird can see it. Welcome, engineer. These men lie in wait for their own blood. They ambush only themselves. Such are the paths 
of all who go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the life of those who get it. Out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square. On top of the wall, she cries out. At the city gate, she makes her speech. How long will you, who are simple, love your simple ways? How long will mockers delight in mockery and fools hate knowledge? Verse 23. Repent at my rebuke, then I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make known to you my teachings. But since you, re you refuse to listen, then... When I call and no one pays attention, when I stretch out my hand, since you disregard all my advice and do not accept my rebuke, verse 26, I in turn will laugh when disaster strikes you. I will mock when calamity overtakes you. When calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster sweeps over you like a wild wind, when distress and trouble overwhelm you, then they will call to me, but I will not answer. They will look for me, but will not find me, since they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. I want you to know something about this, that knowledge and the fear of the Lord are interchangeable. They are something that you need to be able to know that the moment you actually have the fear of the Lord, you will have knowledge. It does not matter what level of education you have acquired. When you have the fear of the Lord, you will have knowledge. I have met men and women of God that were not well schooled. They never went to high school. They didn't go even to a good school. They didn't even go to school at all. But when God catches hold of them and they get to fear the Lord, then they will receive knowledge. Verse 30. Since they would not accept my advice and spurned my rebuke, they will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. For their waywardness of the simple will kill them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. These are deep words that you must put them close to your heart. That the waywardness of the simple will kill them. What do I mean with the waywardness? Is if you are a believer that thinks it's okay to celebrate Halloween, if you are a believer that is busy doing all those pagan holidays so that you can please your normal, ordinary people. Let me tell you something. If you are planning to start an academy, start an academy and also help evangelize the people in that particular academy by sharing with them the gospel in the way that you teach them. Because majority of the majority of the leaders we have in northern Kenya went to Christian schools. Majority of them. But in those schools, they were not evangelized. So they remained the same way they came in, they came out the same way. They became like a very, very oily, uh, like, like, a, like a very oily garment. You put, it in, you put it in plain water, it will come out the same way. It will not be affected. You need to put detergent and soap so that when you put the oil inside the, the water, it, the soap begins to work on the detergent. Uh, the detergent begins to, to work on the clothes. And that way, the person will get answers to prayer. The waywardness of the simple will kill them. And the complacency of fools will destroy them. No, sometimes we read this scripture in passing, but I want you to hear the tone of wisdom. Wisdom is speaking with a tone of rebuke. Wisdom is saying out in the open, she raises her voice in the public square. If I told this is, a, is wisdom, wisdom is not whispering. Wisdom is raising her voice in the temple square. She's raising her voice in the public square for everybody to hear. On top of the wall, she cries out. At the city gate, she makes her speech. So how is this if I describe it to you? Wisdom is running to the public square and say, Hey, I'm here. I'm wisdom. Then he goes on top of the gate, on top of the wall. Hey, I'm wisdom. And then makes a speech at the city gate where nobody can ignore the cry of wisdom. Nobody. 
But verse 23 reminds us and says, Repent at my rebuke. Then I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make known to you my teachings. There is something about repentance that is going to let you get into God's wisdom. You keep having waywardness in your life. You will not allow repentance into your life. So you need to come to the place that maybe possibly as I talk to these people, I spoke in arrogance. Maybe as I spoke to these people, I am a Christian and I felt more important than them so that when I was talking to them, I was telling them things like, you don't know my God. He will come. The moment you're using that, waywardness comes behind you and starts to bring its way and you begin to be an arrogant Christian who rolls up the window at the, at the gate of the church does not even say hello to anybody says he's anointed does not want anybody to see him <laughs> Lord have mercy rebuke, rebuke repent at my rebuke then I will pour out my thoughts to you and I will make known to you my teachings. This is wisdom saying. So verse 32 says, For the waywardness of the simple will kill them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. Wisdom is making a rebuke. Wisdom is calling out. Receive wisdom. Ecclesiastes 8. He never gave up Abraham. Lying. He made a feast to the angels. Some praise there. And then the man came. Hey. I love this mass I worship. Ecclesiastes chapter number 8. The word of the Lord says, Who is like the wise? Who knows the explanation of things? A person's wisdom brightens his face, brightens their face, and changes their hard appearance. Verse 2. Obey the king's command, I say, because you took an oath before God. Do not be in a hurry to leave the king's presence. Do not stand up for a bad cause, for he will do whatever he pleases. Since a king's word is supreme, who can say to him, what are you doing? Verse 5. Whoever obeys his command will come to harm, to no harm. And the wise heart will know the proper time and procedure. I told you this scripture that actually now it becomes part of your language. That before you do something, you will also consult and you will say, the heart, the wise heart, knows the proper time and procedure. So meaning that if at all you want to go to the state house, you do not just decide to go to the state house the way you want to go. There is a stated procedure. Sometimes they even ask you, are you coming to pray? Yes. Can you write down the prayer you are going to make? They will tell you that in the state house. They say, write down the prayer you are going to make. How long is it going to take? How long are you going to be in the king's presence? And you must keep to the latter of those things that you have said. If you skip, the one who runs to the program of the president of the country will come immediately and remove you and you will be taken out of the state house. Irrespective of who you are, you must know the proper time and procedure. So if you have been told to come to the state house at 9, please be there at 8 so that you have one hour of clearing. Or even 7. Who doesn't want to see the state house and how it looks? You can go early, earlier than usual, much earlier than usual, so that the time that you're going to get there, you are in proper time and procedure. Are you understanding? There are some certain missions that the Holy Spirit puts in my spirit that I have to know the proper time and procedure. If at all I do not do the proper time and procedure, then things will not flow the way the Holy Spirit wants them to flow. So you must understand that the wise heart will know the proper time and procedure. For there is a proper time and procedure for every matter. 
Though a person may be weighed down by misery, there is a proper time and procedure for every matter. There is a proper time and procedure for you to prosper. And this time that we are talking about now is a season of fruitfulness. The Holy Spirit has spoken and mentioned to it and said, this is the season of fruitfulness. He said the, the season of harvest. Was it a season of harvest? Oh yes, it was a season of harvest. It was a season of harvest. I don't know about you, I saw harvest. It's now a season of fruitfulness. So now the wise heart knows the proper time and procedure to key into the season. You understand me? To key into the season of fruitfulness. Let me show you something in Psalm 68. Oh, Rabba Santa Basuka. Yambe Zako Zirambu Kata. Yambo Sitere Zakabo Sondo Robo Sakayase. Rebo Shataka Basondo. Robo Shakata Kabasundi Akasa. Abraham. Psalm 68. Never was a young man like that. Yes, I Psalm 68, Psalm 68, verse number. Is it 68 or is it 65? Let me get it for you. Just in a short while. Psalm 65, Psalm 65, verse 11. It says, You crown the year with your bounty, and your cuts overflow with abundance. You crown the year with your bounty. You crown the year with your bounty. Your cuts overflow with abundance. The season of fruitfulness means that these cuts that overflow with abundance, that the hills are clothed with gladness, the meadows are covered with flocks, and the valleys are mantled with grain, and they shout for joy and sing. As you understand in the realm of the spirit that now we're entering into a season of complete prayer, fasting, and spiritual warfare. That is the time. Don't need to ask me. When is the first ending? When is the first starting? It's a season of fruitfulness. You need to know the time and procedure for every matter. So as a wise heart, as we are praying for the gaining a heart of wisdom, we cannot spend with God time 150 days and remain foolish. No. No way. It's not possible. Yesterday the Lord put me in a very uh, in a very uncommon situation. I did not expect it. The Lord took me to a place that is very, very, very extremely insecure. Totally. And he said, go there. Don't even take your camera to a safe place. Go with it. But don't remove it from the car. Just leave it there. Then he said, okay. Then I found myself in a matter that I needed to make some, res uh, to make some, maybe I'll put this in the group. You cannot see it properly. Maybe I'll post it in the world you will watch. I found myself, you know, talking to these people and telling them what exactly the problem is with their location and their area. The Holy Spirit put me in a place that I could not expect myself to go. I found myself there. And this place is a, is a particular area that is, um, you know, like a, like an alley, there are buildings here, buildings here, and then there is a shortcut from the road. The number of people that have been stabbed there, the number of people that have been uh, robbed there is, yeah, they can't even tell me the number of people. But the Lord took me there because at the beginning of that place is where we have the person who is being given the work of what we call Nyumbakumi. It's like the 
the elder of that area. The, ma the person who had been given that work by the government of Kenya. I was not going there because I, was, I knew what had been happening. That was not the reason why I went there. I went there because of my own personal reason. And when I was there for my personal reason, the Lord turned it and it became a mission. Just completely complete with a community service of cleaning a school. I, I said, Lord, I did not plan this. Why now? You, okay, I don't ask him why these days. What he's telling me, I say yes, Lord. The wise heart will know the proper time and procedure. As now we come, we came from there. The, as we were moving now from where we had stood, where we had gone to see the Nyumbakumi lady, and we were moving into another space. As we were moving there, they were told this. Uh, they told me this place is very, very dangerous. And at that time, the Lord had asked me to wear very interesting shoes. These ones. These are the shoes I was wearing yesterday. So as I'm wearing these shoes, the Holy Spirit tells me, now remove your shoes and hold them and walk with them. Let them look like there's something wrong with them, but there's nothing wrong. So I am removing my shoes and I'm prayer walking. I understand my authority. I understand the power that I am carrying. I understand the dunamis of God. That when he spoke to the priest and said, go and stand in the Jordan. There is something that happened. I began to do it. Nobody would notice what I was doing because I was walking with the locals. And I was walking in the place where it is dangerous. There are broken glass everywhere. But nothing, nothing touched me. Nothing. I walked on that area. I was, of course, looking. When I see something that might harm me, I don't step on it. I step on something else. But I walked on that bare ground and I decreed in the name of Jesus Christ that that ground, no more, no more mugging there. No more thuggery there. No more drugs there. The Lord has completely changed that spot in the name of Jesus Christ. Then the Lord said, now, do this. And we did it. What am I trying to tell you? There is a proper time and procedure for every matter. Though a person may be weighed down by misery, there is a proper time and procedure for every matter. I don't know who I'm speaking to here, but I want to tell you, even if uh, that situation about your work is not the right way, there is a proper time and procedure for you to prosper. Seven, since no one knows the future, who can tell someone else what is to come? Oh, as no one has, has power over the wind to contain it, so no one has power over the time of their death. As no one is discharged in the times of war, so wickedness will not release those who practice it. 9. All this I saw, and I applied my mind to anything, everything done under the, the sun. There is a time when a man lords it over others to his own heart. Then too I saw the wicked buried, those who used to come, and go from the holy place and receive praise in the city where they did this. This too is meaningless. Ecclesiastes 8.11 When the sentence for a crime is not quickly carried out, people's hearts are filled with schemes to do wrong. Although a wicked person who commits a hundred crimes may live a long time, I know that it will go better with those who fear God, who are reverent before him. Yet, because the wicked do not fear God, it will not go well with them, and their days will not lengthen, and their days will not lengthen like a shadow. There is something else meaningless that occurs in the earth. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 14. The righteous who get what the wicked deserve, and the wicked who get what the righteous deserve. This too, I say, is meaningless. So I commend the joy, enjoyment of life because there is nothing better for a person under the sun than to eat and drink and be glad. Then joy will accompany them in their toil all the days of the life God has given them under the sun. 16. When I applied my mind to know wisdom and to observe the labor that is done on earth, people getting no sleep day and night, then I saw all that God has done. No one can comprehend what goes on under the sun. Despite all their efforts to search it out, no one can discover its meaning. Even if the wise claim they know, they don't really comprehend it. We are going now to the book of Job. Job chapter 19. Then Job replied, 
How long will you torment me and crush my words? Ten times now you have reproached me. Shamelessly you attack me. If it is true that I have gone astray, my error remains my concern alone. If indeed you would exalt yourselves above me and use my humiliation against me, then know that God has wronged me and drawn his net around me. Job 19 verse 7 Though I cry violence, violence, I get no response. Though I call for help, there is no justice. He has blocked my way so I cannot pass. He has shrouded my paths into the, in darkness. He has stripped me of my honor and removed the crown from my head. He tears me down on every side till I am gone. He uproots my hope like a tree. His anger burns against me. He counts me among his enemies. His troops advance in force. They build a siege ramp against me and encamp around my tent. Verse 13. He has enlightened my fam alienated my family from me. My acquaintances are completely estranged from me. My relatives have gone away. My, close relative, my closest friends have forgotten me. My guests and my female servants count me a foreigner. They look on me as, as on a stranger. I summon my servant, but he does not answer. Though I beg him with my own mouth, verse 17, my breath is offensive to my wife. I am loathsome to my own family. Even the little boys scorn me. When I appear, they ridicule me. All my intimate friends detest me. Those I love have turned against me. I am nothing but skin and bones. I have escaped only by the skin of my teeth. I have pity on me. Have pity on me. My friends have pity. For the hand of the Lord has struck me. Why do you pursue me as God does? Will you never get enough of my flesh? Oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll. That they would that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead or engraved in rock forever. Job 19, verse 25 coming. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. I want you to know this scripture here is very, very key. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. This is where the song comes from. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. Job 19 verse 25. And after my skin he shall be destroyed. After my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes and not another. How my heart yearns within me. If you say, how will we, how we will hound him? Since the root of the trouble lies in him, you should fear the sword yourselves. For wrath will bring punishment by the sword. And then you will know that there is judgment. That is Job 1929. So we are heading out to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 62. My favorite chapter. I love it too much. The Lord has helped us to read a chapter a day of Isaiah for 62 days. Now today is the 62nd day. Yesterday I saw a reenactment of this verse 4 they will rebuild ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated yesterday i was doing that where i had gone isaiah 62 for zion's sake i will not keep silent for jerusalem's sake i will not keep i will not remain quiet Till a vindication shines out like the torch, her salvation, like a blazing torch. The nations will see your vindication and your kings your glory. You will be called by a new name. 
Malcolm David Sela. Hallelujah. You will be called by a new name that the Lord, mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand. Hey, Jesus. A royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will you be called you forsaken or deserted or name your land desolate. But they will call you will be called Hefziba and your land Beulah. For the Lord will take delight in you and your land will be married. As a young man marries a young woman, so will your builder marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will the Lord, with God, will your God rejoice over you. Verse 6. I have posted watchmen on your walls, Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest and give him no rest. Till he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, never again will you a grain will you give will I give your grain as food for your enemies, or never again will foreigners drink the new wine for you for which you have toiled, verse nine. But those who harvest it will eat it and practice and praise the Lord. And those who gather grapes will drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. Verse number 10. Pass through, pass through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway. Remove the stones. Raise a banner for the nations. Hallelujah. I received that for Mission Monday. This is the word of the Lord that I run with in the Mission Monday. This week's Mission Monday, only the Lord knows. Hey, I covet a lot of your prayers. I covet a lot of your prayers. A lot of your prayers. Because I am heading out, as the Lord helps me, to declare over those gates, pass through, pass through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway. Remove the stones. Raise a banner for the nations. Raise a banner for the nations. This is the call. This is the word. The Lord has put in my mouth. And he has declared it. To remove the stones. To raise a banner for the nations. The Lord has made proclamation to the ends of the earth. Say to daughter Zion. See your savior comes. See his reward is with him. And his recompense accompanies him. They will be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, verse 12. And you will be called sought after, the city no longer deserted. This is my portion. I don't know about you. I am no longer going to be deserted. I will, not, I will be called sought after, sought after. Malcolm David Silla is sought after. Yes. Pray over yourself. Decree this word in your situation that you will be called sought after. In the name of Jesus, you will be called sought after. Called sought after. Called sought after. Called sought after. You will be sought after in the name of the Lord. Yes, even as a young man, you will be sought after. The Lord is giving it to you. He's giving you capacity to be sought after. Talk to God. I want you to pray for yourself from verse 6. My sister Gladys, we have missed your presence here. It says, I have posted watchmen on your walls. They will never be silent, day or night. Give yourselves no rest. And give him no rest till he establishes Jerusalem. This is the tenacity that God has given us every single time. When we come out to pray, 
What we are telling God every time is that, Lord, we give you no rest. We give you no rest. Now we come to you, our Father, asking you for your grace and your capacity to declare it, prepare, prepare, pass through, pass through. Prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway. The highway of holiness, my God. Build up, build up, build up, build up, build up, build up, build up. Hey, Jesus. Build up, 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 build up the highway. Protect us. Cover us. Give us grace, capacity, ability, wisdom, time, and procedure for every matter that is ahead of us. Is a season of fruitfulness. Again, the next six days we shall be reading the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. We begin today. Tomorrow is chapter 2. The next day is chapter 3. The next day is chapter 4. On the sixth day, we shall be also finishing. In the next four days, we'll be finishing Isaiah. And also, I, I hope you have been marking those places we've been going. Because if you have been marking, then your Bible is looking very good. Your Bible is looking very good. If at all you have not marked them and you wrote them in your, in your notebook, you can always go back and mark your Bible. In the beginning of February, I challenged myself. I went and bought a brand new Bible. Totally new. Because my cherished Bible had read it so much that it got spoiled. My favorite Bible, I loved it so much. That now I had to Gideon, just give me that other Bible if you have it there. The small one. I had read this Bible so much that the pages, one day it fell and got scrambled like this. I said, Lord, why? He got scrambled. I said, instead of me buying another one, instead of me trying so hard to fix this Bible that I cherish so much, this beautiful Bible that I cherish so much. That you know when you have children also sometimes they are creative. They want to do something with it. So, ah, I was like, Lord, I will go back and start to restress all those pages and what you told me. And I will mark it against this one that belongs to to me in the journey. You can see that Bible. I'm still trusting God that I will get to fix it. You know, there's one scripture here that I can read. The Lord gave me and said, For you will nurse and be satisfied at her comforting breast. You will drink deeply and delight in her overflowing abundance. At 2 a.m. in 21st December 2006, the Lord gave me this scripture when my wife was heavily pregnant with our son, who I did not know by UV scan, but I knew by the Holy Spirit that he was going to be a son and his name was going to be Gideon. Hallelujah. That God had already spoken. So the day little Gideon was born, he did not stay in the hospital even one day. He was born in a hospital. He was not born in a prestigious air-conditioned room. No. Ordinary, ordinary, ordinary public hospital in Nairobi. That's where he was born. And that same way, God gave favor to my wife and I so that in that same way, God put people around her from the doctor to the nurse to the people that were with her, if you know about public hospitals, you know even people sometimes die while giving birth because they are not given attention. But God gave me favor in a public hospital in 2007. 
that during when this baby was born and we came home, my, my dear mom, Consolata, uh, overseer of Mount Carmel Ministries International. That's why she's my mother. I don't call her spiritual mother. No, she cannot give birth to a spirit. No way. She's been a mother. Yani ni mama wakweli. Amekuwa na sis. Ali tupeleka hospital. Aga tutu hospital. Iyo vitu yote alifani. Now we have come home with our mom and our sister Stella and another sister also was there. And we arrived home. Gideon I know he's listening. He's here with me. We arrived home. And when we arrived home, the little boy could not suckle. Hey! One box of milk was close to, I think around that time was about 800 shillings. So you can imagine to sustain a little baby on 800 every day and there is no money at all. I walk to my place of work every morning. I have no work there. It's a difficult time, but God, God, has been with me. Now listen, Gideon, I reminded those my dear sisters and my mom, I told them, God gave me a word on 22nd of December 2006 at 2 a.m. Why? How did I know that? Because I wrote it down in my Bible. I wrote it down. It is still there. If I show you, you can see it. Right there. Of course, it's in inverse. You cannot see it well. Ha! Ah, this Bible. I need to create another copy. Now, that's now as we read the scripture. When the Lord speaks to me, I write in the Bible. When the Lord says something to me, I write in the Bible. So, when later on a challenge comes, I go back to my Bible and I see. What did God do here? What did he say here? Did it come to pass here? Yes, it came to pass. So, Isaiah 66 verse 12. We read that scripture and I told my mom, you guys can help her. You are mothers. You can help her. My wife had never circled before. She was a firstborn baby. So, she held a breast to the boy. And mom was praying and declared. And right there, I saw the little guy. He just brought out his lips and nyum, 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 nyum. He started to suckle out of his mother's breast. And let me tell you, something supernatural happened to that boy that day. Because the enemy wanted to cause a hunger and a thirst to come over the boy so that he can start taking us to the hospital of our firstborn and so on. But no, we had advanced knowledge by prayer. So that the word of the Lord says that you will know the right time and procedure. Isaiah 66 verse 12. I will extend peace to her like a river and the wealth of the nations like a flooding stream. You will nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees. Now this is the new NIV. This one is the 1984 NIV. The one that spoke to me directly that time said, you will be nursed at your mother's breast. You will be nursed. You will be nursed. You will be nursed. And that boy was nursed. And today, he is able to stand 15, 13 years down the line and say God has been with him. Isaiah 62. Hallelujah. Gideon, just come and say hi just over here. I'll see you. Just come, say hi, just wave at the people. Hallelujah. No, this way, here, this way. So this is Gideon, uh, the one I'm referring to. Yeah, just, just wave at the people. Just say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, tell them something, maybe. God has been faithful to me, and he has provided for us food and everything, and... I, I thank him and I bless him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Gideon. So that's Gideon, the one I'm talking about. That's the son of my right hand. That's the firstborn of my loins. I speak a blessing over him. Even in his first year of teenage, the Lord to give him guidance and to help him and to remove difficulty out of his way. I bless you with all the blessings of our father. In Jesus' name, I bless you. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ephesians. Paul, an apostle of Christ, Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus. The book of Ephesians is not written to anybody else. It was written to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus. My question to you, are you the faithful in Christ Jesus? Are you the faithful in Christ Jesus? Are you the faithful? The question is that one. Are you faithful? If you listen in, the wise heart will know the proper time and procedure. Lord, help me to have the proper time and procedure. Help me, Lord. Fill my mind, Lord Jesus. Your word says when we repent, Lord, you'll be able to fill our hearts and minds with wisdom. If you're just joining us, I welcome you. I celebrate your presence. I don't take it for granted. But out of many other things you could be doing on social media right now, you have taken time to stop on this video and to be this far with me. I really celebrate you for that. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord shine his face upon you. May the grace that the Lord has given us to run this race come in a double way in your life. In the name of Jesus, may God open your eyes to see, to acknowledge, to know, to have understanding, and to know that the things that God has spoken, that now we begin to chew in the word and to begin to get deep in the word, to get deep. When it says deep in the word, is that when you get into the word, you're getting deep. You're getting deep. There's something about swimming that I understand. I'm a swimmer. I love to swim. I love swimming. I love swimming in water. Through swimming, I got back my health. I was obese. Through swimming, I got rid of the extra kilos. And I thank God. But now I can come here and swim deeper in the world. Deep. Want to dive deeper. 30 meters. Huko ndani huko. Kabisa umeenda. Huko ndani kabisa ya maji. He says something here in verse 23. I wanted to highlight this one, Celeste. Highlight this scripture for us. In writing, not just writing the name. Just pour, copy it and paste the way it is. Repent at my rebuke. Then I will pour out my thoughts onto you. I will make known to you my teachings. Every day, find time to repent. Because when you repent... Even if you have not done anything wrong, just repent. Because when you repent at wisdom, maybe the way you have handled a situation, you have not been wise how you have handled it. You have handled it in a foolish way. Maybe God was putting for you a difficult person in your way so that this difficult person can enable you to work out your character in a particular direction. There is something in your character that God is not happy about. There are two things that are very key in the realm of the spirit. Your heart and your character. Those two things, very, very key. Very key. Extremely key. That during this time, I have continued to bring my character to God and tell God, God, silence me. Help me. Silence, 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 silence. Help me to speak only your word. I can be funny. I know that. I got a gift. I can make you laugh until you go kote chini. I know that. But I've not been called as a comedian. No. Uh-uh. That's not my portion. I can make millions out of it, but I will not do it. Because I know the relevance of God's word, the, the lips of the priest, they preserve knowledge. That's what the lips do. So as you are already in a realm that God has brought you into, 
that the gift that God gives you, you begin to be fruitful in the land. Begin to be fruitful. That you can tell people, no, I think we are acting too quickly in this matter. Let us approach it with the right time and procedure. I think we are being hasty on this matter. Let us give it its proper time and procedure. And let the Lord help us so that we can be able to glorify his name. The proper time and procedure is come for us to see the grace of God. He has said one word. As you go out into Mission Monday, he put this on my word and said, Now go in Isaiah 62, verse number, this one that says, Build up, build up, prepare, pass through, pass through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, remove the stones. Remove the stones, raise a banner for the nations. Hey, Jesus, what a great commission. The Lord says, go, pass through, pass through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, remove the stones, raise a banner for the nations. What a clear direction. Raise a banner, raise a banner, raise a banner, raise a banner for the nations. As we gather here in the nations, it's not by accident. I can see Rwanda, I can see South Korea, I can see Belgium, I can see America, I can see um, South Carolina, it's America, I can see Rwanda, I can see Uganda, my brother um, Charles there, I can see, oh my Lord, nations gathered. My father. Ephesians, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My question is this, why are you not greeting people? This is my question, why? Why are you just showing up on the WhatsApp group with just, boom, a video? Boom, a message. Malcolm David Silla, mbona usalimi what? Neno la Mungu linakuuliza hivi Malcolm wewe wewe wewe. Mbona usalimi watu wewe? Mbona uwasalimi? Mbona uwasalimi? Paul is asking. He's already telling you something about our characters. How many times do you start your message by greeting people? Simple things. Look at it there. To God's holy people in Ephesus, the holy and faithful in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Abariyako, I usually love that. Abariyako, ungependa kumpatia Yesu maisha yako. Abariyako, hey! If you don't know Swahili, I've taught you Swahili. You start by saying, Abariyako, how are you? He says, grace and peace to you, shalom, sister Celeste. Shalom to you, greetings. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, write that in the tablets of my heart. Let that be part of my speech. Wherever I speak to people, Lord, give me grace and peace to you from the Lord our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Help me change my tongue. Change what I say to people. Abariyako, neema yu eknanyi, kutoka kwa Yesu Christo. God give you grace. This is biblical approach of the work of fruitfulness. Three. Praise be to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will.
at the noonday hour, we sound the trumpet and declare a season of fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. Everything you touch your hand to do will become fruitful. Even some seeds you'll not plant, you just drop them on the ground. You pass by a few days, they'll be growing. Verse 3. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight in love. The only way to remain blameless in the sight of God is in love. He chose us. Be happy. Jesus. Sound the alarm. We worship you, our Father. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love. He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. 6. Ephesians 1. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ, my sister Nemo, to be put in effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. So when God is working out something, it's in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When he believed, when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Now this, for this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep you, I keep us, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Verse 8. I know. Hallelujah. Goes. He says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, that in order you may know the hope that which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great dunamis, great power for us who believe. That power, that dunamis, is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, every name that is invoked not only in the present age but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Father, as we enter into this new season of fruitfulness, Help us and give us the capacity and wisdom on what we must do and how we must do it. Lord, we pray that your name will be glorified, that as we get into this season of fruitfulness, 
that many souls will come to your knowledge. Lord Father, according to your word again, we thank God because you have given us capacity. And Lord, according to your word as you have given unto us, Lord, if one will confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart, God raised him from the dead, that they will be saved. My friend, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And truly, you will get into the season of fruitfulness. I bless the Lord and give him all the glory and all the honor. Let us pray. My Lord, I thank you for giving us this beautiful, beautiful start into November. And we thank you even for giving us capacity for Mission Monday. We thank you for giving us capacity and ability. Lord, even as you set my feet to go, I pray thanking you for giving me capacity to bring your gospel, even to build up, build up the highway to remove the stones and raise a banner for the nations. Lord, I thank you for this wisdom that you have put in my heart. And I thank you for the provision of this great mission that you have already placed in my hands. And I pray that, Lord, you give me the capacity to arise and to raise this banner for the nations. So, Lord, be exalted. I thank you for this dear one that has given their life to Christ. May you bless them and you shine your light on them. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. And we all say, Amen. Shalom.